Welcome to the Investor News. In this video, we're checking out financial market updates, today's current situation, and how it is affecting or will affect the economy. When Bank of America's top rate strategist and former NY Fed analyst, Mark Cabana speaks, investors, the Fed, and even his former Fed co worker and repo guru, Zoltan Pjar, listen. And what Cabana has to say now is extremely important. On Thursday morning, Roughly around the time Bank of America's chief equity strategist Sabata Subramanian slashed her S&P year-end price target by a whopping 25% from 4,500 to 3,600, Cabana's rates team published a must-read note, which is also available to pro-subs in the usual place, in which he wrote that the bank's rates team is making substantial downward revisions to our rate forecasts following our U.S. economics team's new call for a mild 2022 recession and lower Fed funds rate path. What revisions? Well, as of today, in addition to sharply lowering its stock targets, Bank of America is also slashing its 10 years Treasury N22 forecast from 3.50% to 2.75% and N23 forecast from 3.25% to 2.50%. The cuts come as Bank of America's economics team yesterday also slashed its forecast to reflect a U.S. recession in 2022 and materially lowered the Fed funds rate path with the terminal Fed funds rate lowered from 4.00 to 4.25% to 3.25 to 3.50% as the Bank of America economics team now expects 100 BP of Fed rate cuts between September 23 and June 24. Needless to say, the new forecasts are very bullish versus the forwards given the market's expectation for Fed rate cuts in 2H23 and 1H24. Some more details from Cabana. The lower Fed rate path and rate cuts in 23-24 are the most relevant aspects of our U.S. economics team changes for the U.S. rate path. We are lowering our 10 year N22 forecast from 3.50% to 2.75% and N23 forecast from 3.25% to 2.50%. Our new forecasts are very bullish versus the forwards given the expectation for Fed rate cuts in 2H23 and 1H24, Exhibit 4. Our prior rate forecasts initially reflected a bullish rate bias versus the forwards but these revisions make us more constructive versus the current market. This is not all Cabana's insight as he had no choice but to cut his rates forecast in a recession, which of course is not his call, and when the continued sell-off in stocks will push investors into bonds. What was, however, unique in Cabana's take is that the former Fed staffer, whose monetary forecasts always pan out correctly, he correctly predicted that the Fed would purchase corporate bonds just days before the Fed did just that, is that in his new base case for Fed cuts in the second half of 2023 is expected to occur with an end to QT. To wit. We expect the Fed will stop QT with rate cuts due to the contradictory signal it sends on monetary policy and to simplify policy communications. The Fed will likely not want to be easing with rate cuts but tightening with QT. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Cabana reminds us that the Fed has established a playbook for such an action in 2019 when the Fed cut started cutting rates in July 19 and simultaneously announced a cessation of QT. Back then, the QT cessation resulted in the Fed shifting MBS reinvestments up to the monthly redemption cap into USTs purchased in the secondary market. To be sure, it is possible that the Fed will choose not to follow the 19 cut and QTN playbook, but that is unlikely according to Cabana who just in case adds a few potential arguments for not ending QT with a second half 2023 rate cut. The Fed will only be normalizing front-end rates after a period of elevated inflation. The Fed balance sheet will likely still be far from reserve scarcity. We see the logic of each argument but believe it will be difficult to prove ex ante. We also expect the Fed to opt for the simplest communication, stop QT when cutting rates. Cabana then notes that an earlier QT end would have several USD implications. Reduce front-end USD cheapening pressure with more cash, less collateral in financial system, potentially more USD coupon cuts due to lower financing needs, and fewer secondary market USD dislocations due to a restart of Fed purchases from MBS equals greater than USD reinvestment. Each of these would tend to bias USD so for spreads wider across the curve. As for what happens to the Fed's balance sheet, Cabana predicts that Fed QT that is stopped in SEP 23 will result in $1 trillion less balance sheet reduction versus our prior estimates through N24. 
Over a similar period, early QT end would result in $780 billion less UST financing need plus $350 billion of additional Fed UST demand, from Fed MBS paydowns reinvested into USTs. Such a large UST financing shock would result in less bill supply and eventual additional coupon cuts. The risk of early Fed QT and may also encourage the UST to continue with its current slate of coupon reductions and even larger 20 cuts. Finally, while Cabana will not say it just yet, we will, or rather, we will repeat what we have been saying for a long time, after all, we called a premature end to QT several months ago. As for what happens after QT ends, well, there's a playbook for that too, as we discussed yesterday. Expect the market to take a few days, or weeks, to digest the full implications of this critical Fed pivot, but once markets realize that Cabana is once again right, high beta risk assets, currency debasement hedges like gold and Bitcoin, and of course commodities will soar limit up as there will be no U-turn from this particular final Fed capitulation. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? How should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marcus Dan.